Hi, my name is Nicola Dowd, and I'm going to interview Eric Boom on the other side of the dunes. So, can you tell me what the other side of the dunes is? It's a charity we started officially uh, in November of 2015, but uh, we are actually doing this a couple years prior. Uh, I found out through social media that an old Marine Corps buddy of mine was building custom-built motorized beach wheelchairs and selling them uh, in his area in Alabama. So I asked him if we raised the money uh, and we found a veteran for one of his chairs if we could purchase one and give it away. And he laughed and thought, well, sure, because he didn't think we would do it. And a few weeks later, we had our first chair um, and we had our first veteran on the other side of the dunes. And, um, a year later, that's why I mentioned the other side of the dunes, a year later he came to another fundraiser to purchase an additional chair and he told the story about when he lived in North Carolina and he could see the beach from his house but he saw it through a dune and that uh, when we gave him a chair that last year uh, meant so much because it literally put him on the other side of the dunes and that's how we got our name. So, you talked about the military. Can you give me some history on your service? I was a, I was a Marine. Uh, I was in from 89 to 93. Um, I was a tow gunner in the Marine Corps. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, the way that we reconnected in this was with another uh, Marine buddy that, that we had. So, uh, even though I was out of the service, uh, I still worked largely for Department of Defense in different uh, positions and have always stayed close to the military. So it made sense to have a charity that would give back to these folks that give so much. Um, many of them, we, if they're not wounded in combat, a lot of times we forget about them. And so part of what makes us happy is we get a chance to reach out and touch them. So it's great. And how do you get the funds for the chairs? We, we started out just kind of grassroots fundraising, but when we uh, it formalized our charity, we became a 501c3. Uh, so now we have, a, we have a website, we do a couple of events a year, we'll do a blues and jazz concert, and then we do a golf tournament uh, in November every year. Uh, and then of course, everyone or anyone that wants to donate, we usually direct them to our website where it's linked to our PayPal account and we take uh, contributions there. Now that we're a 501c3, we can provide receipts for tax purposes for per people that need that. So we we try to stay kind of small uh, at this point. We, we actually don't do a lot of fundraising because we all have full-time jobs. None of our board members take salaries from this uh, work that we do and we do it on the side. So uh, having a large charity right now probably isn't the direction we're heading in the short term but it would be great somewhere down the road to give hundreds of these chairs away. Mm -hmm. So we'll deal with that as it comes. So who else is involved in Other Side of the Dunes? So my wife is uh, one of the board members and she's very supportive of us. Um, we have uh, Diane Hill and Aaron Hill who are also Raytheon employees like myself. And then Denise Stefan is one of the other uh, board members. But the coolest board member that we have is actually my 11 year old nephew uh, Carson. One of the things that we talked about when we did this was if we would do this long term, uh, we wanted someone down the road to take it that we thought had the passion and cared about it. And even at 11 years old, Carson just understands it and Carson works so hard to uh, help us do what he can do with the charity. And, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that his mom, uh, Mandy, helps a lot because there's some things that Carson can't do yet. and them living in Virginia and us in Florida. Uh, she's been great in helping us as well. And then how do you choose the recipients to receive the chairs? So our, our criteria is uh, fairly basic intentionally. Uh, we didn't want to have a rigorous uh, process necessarily that we go through. Uh, what, what has happened over the years is we built a, a fairly broad network because as we give another chair away, we'll meet four or five more that are in need. So our criteria is basic. You have to have honorably served in the military, have an honorable dis discharge. You have to be in good standing in your community. And there's gotta be a need for the chair. These chairs are designed to be beach wheelchairs. So 
if you live in Kansas or Colorado, you might not be the best candidate right away. So having that beach access uh, is kind of the third criteria. We keep it simple because we want it to be open to many veterans. We don't, we're not, uh, we don't care if it's service related that caused your injuries or if it was after you got out. Um, we want to serve our veterans, so we keep the criteria basic. How many trips have you given away so far? That's the fun part. So um, by the end of this year, uh, we will be at 11 or 12 chairs. Um, and uh, Chance Blaker in Alabama, he sells those uh, generally for $6,000, around $6,000 a piece, depending on the customization. But he sells them to us at a much lower price so that we can go out and we can give these away. So by the end of this year, we'll be at, uh, like I said, we'll be close to a dozen and we're we're really excited about that. Have you identified the next veteran to be a chair? We we actually uh, we actually have three in the hopper right now. Uh, we have Jeff Hopkins who will be uh, the next donor on April 30th in Virginia. Then we have uh, Sua who was an Army uh, veteran. He lives here in Tampa. He's the next veteran. And then we have uh, Bob Kurtz who is a former Ranger and former Delta. Um, service person and he is going to receive uh, that chair. So we have three already planned. And we just, just to add to that, we just gave one away to uh, Monica McVeigh, who was our first female veteran uh, to receive one of our chairs. What is most gratifying for you in doing this? I, I have chill bumps every time <laughs> I get asked that question. And so um, yeah. the thing that always, the reason we do it on the beach when we give the, the chairs is what makes it special. We take for granted that access. We can walk out on the beach anytime, those guys can't. So to watch them that first time jump on that chair with their kid in their lap and ride across the beach, if you don't feel chill bumps when you see it, then something's wrong with you. That's, that's the best thing for us. Do you stay in contact with the veterans after they receive their chairs? Yeah, I'm good friends with lots of them. I mean, we all have very busy lives, so, um, you know, sometimes we probably don't talk as often as we'd like to, but there are there are four or five that I stay in uh, pretty consistent contact with. Uh, we even have Mike Delancey, who is a local guy who has his own charity, uh, the Wounded Warrior Ability Ranch, and we go to a lot of his events to support what they do as well. So we, we try to keep in contact because it's a, we're trying to improve their quality of life. There are other things that you could do with your charitable contributions. There are other charities out there doing different things. For us, we wanted to focus on the things that improve your life and improve your mental state. When you can get out there and you enjoy, enjoy the beach, it just you just feel better. And that's what we were going for. And what's your vision for the rest of the beans? That's the that's kind of the hard part. We we um, as I mentioned, we want to stay small for a while. Uh, we all have full time jobs that you know we still want to do good work, but we have to be able to manage how much good work we can do and still manage everything and it be quality. So down the road, uh, if if things changed and you know um, someone decided that they want to help us get to that next level, we'll address it and we'll. We're willing to grow, we're willing to, to do what we need to do to help more veterans, but right now the plan is to stay kind of a niche kind of charity for the next couple of years probably. And so if people want to learn more, they just go to your website or? Yeah, uh, our website is uh, othersideofthedunes.org um, and then we're on Facebook and we, we, we're on Twitter. We, we try to keep our Facebook page pretty updated with the events and things that we have. Uh, going on and, and the Facebook page is just Facebook slash Other Side of the Dunes uh, and you can go out and see some of the fun and some of the pictures and videos from, from the past. Alright, that's all my questions. Alright, good job. Thank you.